Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. I mean, what do you make of this scandal? I mean, John Stewart, we must emphasise, has essentially backtracked on his yeah. statement, saying that it was a joke, saying that it wasn't really what people are saying. But it has sparked a debate whether or not actually there, that there is something embedded within society mm. um, in terms of these caricatures. What do you think? Well, I think the first thing to say is, is that John Stewart made these remarks initially. They were picked up by Newsweek, uh, but later very forcefully denied that he was levelling any serious accusation at J.K. Rowling or any of the Harry Potter franchise as being anti-Semitic at all. So that's the first thing to make clear. The second thing to make clear is that the accusations of anti-Semitism, as misreported perhaps as they were, were very quickly jumped on by J.K. Rowling's increasingly large army of detractors and enemies um, who aren't known particularly for their sensitivity towards anti-Semitism in general, perhaps, um, but jumped on this uh, as a means to attack her. And so that's the context, really. In terms of the specific point, um, you know, if you watch that bit of the Harry Potter films, which were, by the way, produced, uh, they began to be produced 20 years ago and the last one was produced 10 years ago. So they're, they're quite, you know, quite old now. Um, this row's been around for a while. If you, if you watch that clip, you'll see, you know, I felt a bit uncomfortable, to be honest, because the goblins, they have long noses, they have, you know, big ears, they're quite diminutive, they're wearing suits, they have huge piles of gold that they're sort of stroking and caressing. Um, and the bank has a Star of David on the floor. So the whole thing kind of, you know, combines to give a sense of an anti-Semitic stereotype and certainly rings those kind of bells. Now, there's two, you know, issues that are related to that. The first is, did it, you know, was it intentional? And I think that, uh, you know, you can explain some of these things away. So, for example, the Star of David on the floor, which seems to be the most overt example of uh, a Jewish reference, uh, was there already on the set. It was filmed in Australia House in London, and it was originally an Australian star, which was looked like a Star of David before it was changed to a seven-pointed star in 1909. So that was there anyway. Um, so you can explain perhaps a few of the decisions away, but the whole combined effect of them, you know, you have to be pretty dense not to pick up those sorts of tropes when you're watching it through. But the second and more important point is about J.K. Rowling herself. Now, her track record has been unequivocally um, to stand up for Jews throughout the Corbyn years in particular. Um, she stood up for the Jewish community, put her head above the parapet uh, on anti-Semitism when it was live in the Labour Party in the same way as she's spoken up against the, uh, the, the transgender phenomena, phenomenon. Um, in more recent years. Uh, and certainly within the Jewish community, she's widely regarded as a good friend and somebody of sound judgment and, and, a, and a certain degree of courage as well. So I think that if you look at that context, then the fact that her films had ventriloquized, if you like, perhaps an anti-Semitic trope that has been in the air surrounding goblins for, for, for many hundreds of years, you know, you can't pin that on her, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, certainly I felt uncomfortable when I watched it, but that shouldn't be made to suggest that J.K. Rowling in, her, in, in any way harbours any kind of prejudice, particularly anti-Semitic prejudice.